what's up everybody I'd like to welcome you to another juice tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to talk a little bit more about components and specifically how to include components in other components parent components and child components so what we'll do is we'll create a, another juice project here and I could just do that using file new project and now we have our new project. We'll just create a UI application for this one. So I will just call this sample again, and I'll create project by clicking in the bottom right hand corner. And then I will just save this to my desktop. And now we have our template source files here. I will save and open this in IDE by clicking the center button there. And now we're good to go. So now, coming in here, once again, we will go into our main component.cpp, and we see that we have these methods. We have our constructor, which just creates the component itself, and we have a size that's set to 600 by 400. We have this method called paint. We can think of paint as what is actually happening in the component itself. So what I could do is I could just get rid of all this. Let's just do a couple little things. So we'll do G dot fill all, which will fill the background of our component. And just to review, if we want to pick a color here, we could use the juice colors class. So we will do juice colors. And I will make this black to start off with. And let's do something else here. So Let's go into our graphics class. Okay, we say that we want to do our graphics class because we have this graphics object here that's that's given access by our paint method. And let's do let's do an ellipse really quick. So we got uh, I think it's called fill ellipse. Okay, so we got this function called fill ellipse that will fill a, an ellipse or a circle with the current color or brush. And we see here that it takes four arguments. So we have uh, an X, a Y, a width, and a height. Okay, so what I could do is I will now change the color of my brush using g.setColor. And we will do juice colors. I'll just make this red. And then we could do G dot fill ellipse. And now we will do, let's draw it in the middle of the screen. So we can use a method called get width to find out how wide our component is. And we'll do get width minus 100. Oh, let's do get width divided by two, which will put us in the middle of the screen, minus 100. And we'll do get height, which will give us the height of the screen, divided by 2, minus 100. And let's make the width and the height 200 by 200. So we've set the background to black. We've set the color to red. And now we're drawing this ellipse. And so this will take a second to compile. And should compile in a second. And here we are. We have a black screen with a red circle. So there we have our kind of looks like a sun, right? And that's fine. Now, what if we wanted to draw something else that on the screen? How could we do that? Well, we have this concept that's called uh, child components, which are other components, just like the component that we're in right now. And what we could do is we can actually add them. So if we think of the main component as our kind of parent or, or our background component, and then everything else is going to be a, a child component that goes inside the main component. So what we could do is we could create another class so remember to create new source files we need to actually go back to our producer 
and we need to create our source files in the producer itself. So if we're in the file explorer, what we could do is we could hit this plus sign down here in the bottom right. And now you have a couple different options here. Uh, a nice convenient one here that we'll do this time is we do this add new component class split between a CPP and header. So this is nice because this actually creates a new component class that has some of the essential elements that we'll want to use uh, for actually being able to draw this. And I'll show you what I mean in a minute. So we just click on this and we'll call this, let's just call this blue with a capital B because any class name should have a capital at the start. Call this blue component and I'll create this. And it's asking us where we want to save the source file. So we'll just save them to the same folder as our other files here. We'll hit save. And now that's here. And I'm just going to reorganize this a bit. I like to have my header actually underneath my CPP file. And so now we have this blue component class. And what we need to do is to get this to show in our actual IDE, we need to click save and open an IDE again. And now we see that we have this blue component uh, header and CPP with us. Okay, so let's see what this has actually created. So this has created a new class and I would probably encourage you to try to do this from scratch because it's it's great just to learn how to create these classes if you're just getting started. Uh, then we have these two methods that are, uh, we have a marked override. And the reason that they're marked override is because what we want to do is we want to call these paint functions, but we want them to do, we want to define what we want the behavior to be there. So, uh, so that's the reason that these are marked override. So override just paint is a function that is in our juice component class. Okay. And what we are saying in override is that uh, we want to be able to define what we want uh, to happen when this paint function is called. Okay. So I hope that that makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, leave a comment below and I'll try to explain a little bit better. So now there's some uh, just kind of boilerplate code that's already been done for us. And let's just get rid of all this, right? And what we'll do is we will just do a G dot fill all again. And then we have the color. So we once again want to say juice colors. And then since this is blue component, I will just make this, let's make it sky blue, right? And now we have the component that's going to be blue. Okay, it doesn't have a size and I haven't put a size there intentionally for a reason and I'll show you why in just a moment. So now the question is, how do we get this blue component to show in our main component? Well, the first thing that we need to do is we need to include it in our main component class. So it's accessible. So we'll say blue component, include blue component dot H. So now we can call for a blue component object. And now we want to create a blue component. So we'll do this in our private section of our main component. And we'll say blue component with a capital B and then blue component with a lowercase b, just like that. Okay, so now we've created a blue component and now we just need to show it how we want it to, to display in our main component. So now we'll go to our main component.cpp. And now what we need to do is we need to actually make it visible on the screen. And the way that we do this is with a function called add and make visible. And as we can see in the function definition, it says adds a child component to this one and also makes the child visible if it isn't already. Okay, so main component is a parent component. So this is what we call our parent component or what some people call the top level component, which is essentially you can think of it as the main background of the app or of the plugin. And now we're going to do add and make visible. 
And now we want to make blue component a child component of our main component. So now we just need to declare that. So make sure you use the one with the lowercase b, blue component, just like that. And now we've made it a child component of our main component. Okay, and now we're going to compile. And what we'll see is that disappointingly, it still hasn't shown up even though we've made it visible. Okay, and the reason is because we haven't defined how, where on the screen, where in our main component, we actually want this blue component to actually show up. Okay, so what we could do is we go down to uh, our resized method, and this is where we want to define where any child components are actually placed and how they're placed. So what I could do is I could say blue component, and if I go back to the component class reference, we have a uh, we have a method that's called set bounds, and what this does is this changes the, pos the component's position and size. So what we could do is we could define how large we want this blue component be, to be and where we want it to be in our, uh, in our main component. So let's do blue component, set bounds. And I'm not sure why it's not auto-completing. Here we go, set bounds. And now let's just do, let's just put it at zero, zero, which will be the top left of the screen. So I'll put it at zero, zero. And now I'll just make this 200 uh, in width by 200 in height. And now I will see what happens here. And now we see that we now have our blue component showing, okay? So now that is a child component of our main component there, okay? So um, now what we wanna do is let's, let's actually take our son and actually move this out to a class of its own. So let's do one more little thing here. Uh, so we will take this code. Well, actually, let me just, let me actually just, uh, let's make the class first. So what we'll do is we'll go back to the producer and now we will create another, I'm gonna put it down here. I'll create another component class just like this. So add new component class split between CPP and header. And then now I will call this red component. And now create this file. And we're gonna put this in our source folder and now it's put in in our source folder. I'll just move this down here to the bottom. And then I will save and open an IDE because as we can see, red component is, isn't actually visible in our IDE yet. But now that we've saved it and opened it, then now it's, it's in there, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go in here once again, and I'm going to take all of this uh, just default stuff, I'm just gonna delete it. And what I could do is I could go to my main component.cpp and we have this set color and draw ellipse. So we have our kind of red sun, so to speak. And I'm going to just cut this. So our background is just going to be black. And then in our red component, now I'm going to have that as our, uh, our quote unquote sun. Okay, so now we need to include that in main component. So what I could do is I could just do include red component dot H. So let's see what we have so far just to review what we've got. So we will see that we have this black and we have this bit of blue up here. So let's make this like kind of like a sky, right? So what I could do, so this will be, this will be very basic, okay? Uh, I'll show you another uh, method. Actually, no, I'm not gonna do that. Uh, what we'll do is we will do component.setBounds 
and then we'll put it at zero zero and then we'll do kind of the same thing that we did for the the sun itself uh where we did get width so we want our blue component to span the width of our main component and then we will do get height divided by two okay so let's just compile that really quick and now we see that we have a uh, this blue component that's sitting on top so so remember this blue component is a child of this uh, the main component which is black okay and now I want to create this Sun and I want it to sit on top of uh, of our blue component and our main component. So we will do that by creating a red component object. And once again, we need to go back to our constructor of our main component. And now we need to add it and make it a visible child component of our main component. So now it's called red component. I've done it like that. Now, the order that this draws in is very important, okay? So if we want the quote-unquote sun to sit in front of the blue component, we want to make sure that we actually put this after the blue component. So we want the blue component to draw, then we want the red component to draw. So now we do red component dot set bounds. Now, this is going to be a funny one because uh, you'll see what I mean. So we'll do get, uh, so get width divided by two, then get height divided by two, and we'll do minus 100, and then over here we'll do minus 100 as well. And then we'll do width of 200 and height of 200. And let's see what we've got. Okay, so yes, so now we're we're all good here. Okay, I thought it was going to have a box around it, but uh, the only thing that we're doing is we're actually drawing the sun itself. Okay, but there is kind of an imaginary box behind it, um, so uh, I don't want to get too far into it. But when we go to our component, so the component is actually a rectangle shape. Uh, and even though we're only seeing the ellipse itself, there's actually a uh, there's actually kind of a transparent rectangle that's actually going outside of this um, this sun. Okay, and I'll show you what I mean. So if I did like a G dot fill all, and you'll see that the rectangle is actually going to be bigger than the sun itself. So juice, colors, and then let's just make it white. And you see here that we have a white rectangle. So that's, so any component is actually in a square or a rectangle. And then, um, you know, anything is drawn within those bounds. So that's, why it's showing up like that. Um, so, so yeah, so this is a very basic concept of drawing uh, components, uh, which are just, you can think of a component as any visual element in Juice, pretty much. So uh, in the future, we'll be doing uh, more sophisticated ones, such as sliders and um, boxes that you can make selections and buttons and things like that. But this is the very basics of it. So. That's where I'm going to end this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to like and subscribe if you found this useful, and I will see you next time.